Tie on me. There's a lion inside of those lungs that's ready to roar. Shouts of praise unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's worthy of all praise, honor, glory, and majesty, and thanksgiving this morning. Aren't you thankful that he's your king? Amen. Amen. May not have anything worthy within myself to bring him, but I can bring him a hallelujah. Remember, when we say that word hallelujah, we're tearing down all of those kingdoms that's tried to build themselves up in our lives and around our lives, tearing all of them down and lifting up his kingdom. Hallelujah to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise God. Turn with me to the book of Song of Solomon, chapter number 2. Song of Solomon, chapter number 2. Brother Laney already put his family on notice that he has lunch plans with the day. He said, Pastor's been in revival all week, so he may be long-winded today, so we'll get there when we get there. Hopefully you put your family on notice too, but I'll try my best not to hold you long, but I'll hold you as long as the Lord would have me to this morning. I believe he's gave us a word for this service today, something I've uh, something I've never preached before, verses that I don't ever recall preaching from. I've preached from Song of Solomon but typically from chapter 5. But this verse was on my heart as Sister Baltman was preaching the other night. And as she was talking about the, the, the tent and the tabernacle. She's preached about that tabernacle. And when she got to talking about Mary and Brother Brewer, talked about when God gave her him, he gave her, and I just blurted out, and she looked at me and nodded, said, he gave you a covering. He gave you a covering. He gave you protection. And this, this, verse, this verse immediately came to my mind, and I began to look at it in between working and, and revival service this week, just reflecting on it and uh, looking at some commentary on it. And I sat down yesterday and uh, got, got my thoughts uh, down in some notes and, and just want to be obedient to his voice today. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Father, we love you today. Thank you for your word. I ask you to add your anointing upon your servant to preach and your servants to receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We rack up to verse 1 of this chapter. We know Song of Solomon is, uh, is a wonderful book, a wonderful love story. And uh, as I was listening to the entire book yesterday, as I was uh, getting ready to start my work day and was heading out to my first stop, was just listening to these uh, the chapters of the Song of Solomon, just begin to watch some things unfold. I may go back to this book in coming weeks because uh, I begin to see some things that I haven't seen before, begin to have an understanding of some things that I, I didn't have before within that book. But we look back in this chapter, and we'll just stick with these first four verses of this chapter because there's so much uh, that you could get into, and I'll, I'm trying to stay off rabbit trail so I can just get to what, what we're trying to, to share with you today. But he wrote here, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. As the lily among thorns, so is my, beloved, my love among the daughters. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Now we know that the great God of heaven lifted us up out of a lifestyle of sin. That he changed and he transformed our lives that we have been born again, that we have been given a new, a new, some say a new lease on life, but Scripture does not call it a new lease on life. Scripture calls it a new life, a born-again life, according to John chapter 3, a life that's not uh, been renewed or restored. Uh, you find something that's been restored, uh, and it doesn't matter how professionally restored it is, uh, there is somebody that will be able to find something uh, of the past in there. Uh, but if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things passed away. All things become new. Now that's enough to get excited about. That's enough to praise the Lord about. Uh, but here in verse 3, he said, uh, So the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great 
delight, uh, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Uh, Sister Baltman was preaching about that Friday night, to uh, taste of the Lord and know that he is good, to know that in the midst of a famine there's nothing uh, like that that the Lord gives us in those times. Uh, I don't know where he brought you from, uh, but I know where he brought me from. Uh, I don't know what he brought you out of, uh, but I know what he brought me out of. Uh, I don't know what runs in your family, uh, but I know that what ran in my family stopped right here uh, because God uh, took and broke every fetter, every chain, uh, every stronghold uh, that I've tasted of the Lord uh, and seen that he is good. Uh, I rest under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, he brings me in and he protects me. Uh, he is my rock. Uh, he is my cleft within the rock. Uh, he is the shadow upon my right hand. Uh, he is my all uh, and my all. Uh, he is my everything. He lifted me up out of a horrible pit, out of a miry clay, set me upon a rock, set me under the shade of his pavilion, set me there under the blessedness of his holiness and his righteousness. But aren't you glad that he could have stopped there, but he didn't stop there. I preached this before. He brought us out to bring us in. He brought us out to bring us in. Pastor Paul continued following the will of God for his life because his wife came home, Sister Amanda came home uh, from a prayer meeting and he was struggling in some stuff and she she was in a different place and he was there praying and she walks in the door and she said, oh, by the way, at prayer meeting, God gave me a message for you. I did not bring you out of Egypt uh, for you to go back. Uh, he didn't bring us out for us to go back, uh, but he brought us out. Uh, so if God didn't bring us out of Egypt, uh, for us to go back. Can I tell you, no matter what the children of Israel thought while they were in the wilderness, God, no matter that generations died in the wilderness, God did not bring them out of Egypt to die in the wilderness. Friend, God did not bring us out of this world and out of Egyptian bondage to die in the wilderness from where we're at to where we're going. He said here in verse 4, he brought me to the banqueting house. And just to be able to abide under the shadow of that tree would be nice, right? That would suffice for me just to, to rest. In the life that I lived before, there was no rest. If you've ever dealt with anxiety and depression, there's no rest in that. There's a restlessness that goes with that. If you've ever been just surrounded uh, by sin, sin brings chaos. When, when, there, when there is chaos going on, look around. If you begin to experience chaos in your home, if you begin to experience chaos at your workplace, you don't have to look very far and you're going to find that there's sin. You begin to experience chaos uh, in your personal walk, some things that's going on that's just chaotic. Uh, you will find uh, real quick sins in the house somewhere. Remember, it's the small foxes that spoil the vine. The devil loves to sneak in and slip in and subtle. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine uh, uh, here a few nights ago as their daughter was praying. Their daughter's the same age as my daughter. And I, I said, the enemy loves, no matter how much we uh, raise them in church and, and we're pastor uh, and, and they live in a parsonage and all that we do to protect them, uh, the enemy always tries uh, and always seems to find a way to get something in there. And he said something uh, that just triggered uh, and brought to my attention the reality of what we're dealing with. He said, sometimes he's just so subtle about it but it won't take very long to see that sin sin is the midst of chaos also it would suffice me to know that i'm just under the shadow of the uh, amen just under the shadow to know there's no longer chaos because where chaos was at i have peace He's turned mourning to dancing, amen. I, I, where before I had no, I thought I had everything uh, to be upset about. See, uh, as a young man, see, my thought process was everybody was out to get me. I, I'm, I'm just that guy. I, go, I didn't go to high school football games because when those ten guys uh, huddled up in the middle of the field, I just knew they were talking about me. Amen. 
they're, they're, they're talking about me. And just to know that it probably didn't help as I'm riding my bike down the road that some dude throws a football, hits me in the ear, knocks me off. They could have made a movie about my childhood. I'm telling you, water boy had nothing on me. Playing basketball in the gym, here comes a basketball flying across the gym, hits me in the head, knocks me off my feet. That explains a lot of stuff, y'all. I've been hit with a football and a basketball in the head. To look across the gym to see a little short wrestler just snickering and laughing with his buddies. Because look what we did to him, and he can't do nothing about it. See, that's what the enemy would want you to think that your life is just always going to be. Also, it would suffice me to know that he has brought me in the midst of peace. To rest under the shadow of him say, I got you covered. Amen. I've got you protected. There's nothing by, that by any means shall harm us. And to know that he has protected us there, that would be just a great place to be. Uh, but you know something this morning. God has not uh, just called us to rest under a tree uh, and bask in his goodness and bask in his greatness. Uh, there's a season for that as young Christians uh, that we just bask in the fact uh, I'm no longer lost. Uh, I'm no longer walking in darkness. Uh, I'm no longer oppressed. Uh, I'm no longer bound by the things that you to hold me bound. Oh, there is a time of refreshing. Oh, but there comes a point that we move beyond that. He brought me to the banqueting house. He placed me within me. He put inside of me a hunger, a desire. He put a desire inside of me to say, yeah, I know that God saved me. Some people say you don't have to go to church to be saved. Oh, you don't have to. Some people get saved outside of church, but after after we get saved, uh, he brings us into his house. Uh, he gives us a desire uh, for the house of God. Uh, he gives us a desire. Uh, Sister Amy posted the other day on social media to get back to a place uh, where we need to be in our walk with God. Uh, maybe getting back in our seat in church. Uh, I'm glad to know. Why do you go to church so much? Because uh, he brought me here. Uh, he brought me here. Uh, he brought me into the house of God. Uh, he placed within me uh, a desire for the house of God and not just a desire to sit on a pew and be a pew warmer that he brought me into his house that I know that I am in his house I didn't come to church today to be seen I didn't come to church today because it's my position as a pastor and to receive my salary didn't come with my hand out waiting on my paycheck no I didn't come, I, I love every one of you, but I didn't really come uh, to see you. But I came today to draw closer to God. I've come today to the house of God with a desire. Why? Because he brought me into his banqueting house. Uh, he brought me in. Uh, see, we have to look more than walking through a door of a building uh, and being escorted in by the king of kings. Uh, and she's talking about King Solomon uh, escorting her. Uh, it's more than having an escort of a king. Uh, it's more than just being escorted in. Uh, but it's a desire uh, to always be where he wants me to be doing what he wants me to do. Ephesians 2.18 tells us, For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Have you ever tried to walk into somewhere and the door's locked? You can't get in because you don't have access. There's a keypad there. Punch in, key. So I'll try my birthday. Didn't work. I'll try my, my favorite pen didn't work. I have no access. See, I, I do that a lot. I go into a lot of big neighborhoods, and you have to have special access. You got to stop, and you got to talk to a security guard, and they got to have your driver's license, who you're going to see. I just, I was sitting in the van yesterday, and I was sitting behind this guy. He's sitting there at the guard gate, and it's my favorite security guard. I'm telling you, she's the grump of all grumps, but I want her over with a loaf of bread. She's now my best friend. As long as I have a loaf of bread for her every week, <laughs> I got to feed the beast. But she was there, and she looks at him, and he don't speak good English, and he's trying to to communicate her, her the best he can uh, where he's trying to go. Uh, and she sees me behind him, knowing number one uh, uh, that I'm her new friend, and number two, uh, I've got her bread. So he's got to get out the way. 
So she looks at him, and I'm just dying laughing, and my van is still laughing. Uh, when I get up to her, and can't hardly give her the address where I'm going. Uh, she said, if you can't tell me where you're going, uh, you're not getting in. Why? Because he didn't have access. Uh, he wasn't granted access. Uh, all to know that I walk in places today uh, that I didn't have access in before. Uh, you think about Peter. Uh, see, it's the same as coming in as going out. Uh, Peter's in a prison house. Uh, he couldn't get out of there. Uh, he was in the third corridor. Uh, his family's at home praying to some way he could get out. Uh, he goes up to the bars. They don't move. Uh, he goes up and uh, tries to put his fingerprint. It won't open. Uh, but then the angel of the Lord came uh, and said, get up and follow me. See, I don't believe it was just any angel. I believe it was Jesus himself because of the words he chose, follow me. Peter knew those words well. He said, follow me. And Peter's thinking, I can't get out of here. Uh, oh, but he uh, can make the first corridor open. He walks through, and he's like, man. Second one, he walks through. Uh, third one, he walks through. Uh, and he goes, and he knocks on the door of a prayer meeting. Uh, and the young lady says, uh, it's pastor. He's at the door. Uh, they don't believe that. Why? Because he didn't have the authority or the access to get out. Uh, but they forgot who they were praying to. Uh, and to know that we walk in, uh, and we walk out, uh, and to know that through him we have access by one spirit uh, unto the Father, uh, that he ushers us uh, not just into the presence of the King, uh, but also to know uh, that we could have never come into the banqueting house. Uh, I would never be here uh, as a part of the household of faith. I never wanted to be a preacher. There's nothing I would rather do than preach. But I'm not here today because I'm a preacher. I'm not here today because I have credentials in the church of God. I, I'm not here today because of uh, anything that I have done. I, I am here uh, and a part. I call you brother uh, and I call you sister uh, because he uh, brought me to the banqueting house. He brought me into the household of faith. Uh, and to know that we would not be here without that. Uh, we would have never been acquainted uh, with the, the spiritual pleasures that we have uh, if Christ had not brought us in uh, by opening up for us. I'm so glad uh, what the songwriter said. I'm so glad he found me. Wrapped his arms all around me. I'm so glad that he's brought me uh, into a new uh, and a living way. Because I don't know if you uh, realize it or not. I was dead. You were dead. We were dead in the trespasses of sin. To know that we, we serve a God that looks down at a heap of bones and says, I'm going to make that an army. I'm going to make that an army. Nehemiah rebuilding the city has been destroyed, and the enemy looks at a pile of rubbish. And what are you doing, Nehemiah? I'm rebuilding the city. You're going to use that? He points at rubbish. You're going to use that? And God says, I'm going to, do, I'm going to use that. The devil stands back and laughs at us. He says, you really think God's going to use that? He brought me in. Did I deserve to be in the household of faith? No. I deserve to be in a prison house or a graveyard somewhere. His mercy kept me, kept me to that place that he got a hold of me. Christ brought us. He opened for us a new and a living way. And you know what else he's done? He's opened up to us a new and living fountain. I, I love watching the communication of people who've been saved change. I, I love to watch the way they talk change. The way they act change. I even love to watch their social media posts change. It just, just look at it. If you've been saved a short period of time or since social media has come out, you've got saved, uh, uh, go back and, and you look at that, uh, that you used to post, that you used to put. That was stuff that was important to you. Uh, and then you come over and you look. Uh, you know what? The light uh, was flipped on. Uh, the light. He said, you are the light of the world. Uh, and he flipped on a light inside of you. Uh, aren't you thankful? Uh, and he turned on. There's a new living way. Uh, I see things differently. Uh, things that we 
we didn't have a problem with before, uh, they bother us terribly now. Uh, things that we uh, had a problem with before, uh, they don't bother us at all now because we know uh, that it was God bringing us to this place, a new and a living fountain, uh, the writer of Hebrews, whoever that may be. Luke, Paul, we don't know. Many think it's Paul and some think it's Luke. But he wrote in Hebrews 10, 19, 2, 21, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having a high priest over the household of God. The flesh stopped us from getting here before, didn't it? Oh, but when he changed us, his spirit took us past what we couldn't get past. Think about that. His spirit has brought us past what we couldn't get past. I've seen people try to, I'm going to do better. They've made salvation a New Year's resolution. Right? It's a new year, new me. Hey, it's a new year, it's the same me. It's a new year, it's the same me, but it's also the same God. So they they come into this new year, and they say, I'm going to start reading my Bible. I'm going to start praying. I'm going to start going to church. How long does that last? Not very long. Not very long, because after a while, flesh says, "Ah, I'm not much of a reader. Flesh begins to say, I want to get that extra hour of sleep so we don't have time for that praying stuff. Flesh says, "Ah, you know our favorite show comes on Wednesday night. You know our favorite movie is coming out. We got to go see that on Sunday night, and you know the time of year it is. It's time to hit the beach, the golf course, and everywhere else. We don't have, we can't get back for man. That, that's the only day off we got. You want to do what? See, flesh has talked us out of it many times. I don't know about you, but when when I have tried to just keep up with the Wyatts, meaning keep up with what was instilled within me on Sunday, you're supposed to be in church that we talk about coming from a godly heritage. Friend, it's going to take much than coming from a godly heritage. It's going to come from, it's going to take so much more than doing what mama taught you to do or daddy taught you to do and what's instilled within you. See, we can't live it. We can't do it. Our righteousness, say, I'm going to be righteous. Well, that's filthy rags. Oh, but when you come before him and say, Lord, all I have to bring for your presence is a hallelujah, meaning all I can do is say, Lord, tear down those things that have prevented me. And you know what the devil, you know, Excuse me, you know what the Lord does in that moment? He doesn't go in and punch the devil in the mouth. So many people want to make this thing like some movie that they've watched. That Jesus is Chuck Norris. Drop kicking everything and every enemy that's preventing you from getting to the house of God. I, I can't speak for anybody else. I have to speak for me. You know who he went to first? Me. Me. He didn't have to go slap co-workers out of my way. He didn't have to go pulling other people out of my life. He came to me. He said, Lord, deal with my enemies. And people were surprised when they're standing nose to nose with the Lord. Lord, deal with my enemies. And he doesn't move. Lord, sick them. So I'm right where I'm supposed to be because you are your biggest enemy. What did the writer here say? He brought me to that place. He brought me in. Uh, He brought me, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest uh, of the blood of Jesus. I had no boldness before uh, because I didn't realize the access that I had. It's a new and a living way. Uh, It's not something that I have built up, but something he consecrated through us. uh, That He's brought me through the veil as to save the flesh uh, and knowing that we have that high priest over the household of God. uh, That something took place in my life uh, that I tell the flesh, uh, I tell self uh, you can't stop me uh, see we're we're quick to put the devil on notice and the world on notice uh, but it's time we put the flesh uh, on uh, notice sister man is right in the middle of her devotion this morning she looks at her three girls and she said girls you can learn from this too what do you do when you don't feel like going to church what do you do when you don't feel like uh, praying what do you do and they said you do it anyway 
I said, man, that's some training there. Uh, you do it anyway. Uh, I have found that there's two times to pray, when you feel like it and when you don't. Uh, there's two times to praise God, when you feel like it uh, and when you don't. Uh, there's nothing, uh, nothing better than him. Uh, and he has brought me into the banqueting house uh, through a new and a living way. That's not my message. That's just the first part of the verse, and you can't just preach the second part of the verse. His banner over me was love. Not only did he bring me in, he didn't just discreetly bring me in and slip me in. See, my, my personality is this. I'm just going to slip in, sit on the back row, and slip out. That's not how he brought us in. He said he brought me in with a banner displayed over my head. A banner over my head. He didn't put my head on the wall. Forgive me, all you hunters. He didn't put my head on the wall of the banqueting house and say, there's another one of my trophies. I nailed his hide to the wall, and now he's here because I wouldn't do him any good there. Right? He didn't, he didn't take me. How many remember the talking bass? Hit the button and watch what the song that he sings for you because I've brought him in and I've placed him here on this wall and I'll hit the button and he'll say whatever I programmed him to say. No, that's not how he brought me in. He didn't bring me in to display how he has triumphed over me. Now, he thought he was something, but I showed him who is something. No, he didn't bring us in that way. But he brought me into someone he triumphed in. That he triumphed in. That he has renewed and restored and revived and refreshed. He's changed my mind. He's changed my heart. I, I can no longer uh, uh, declare and say, well, uh, that, that's just how we do things. Uh, that's how my family's always done it. Uh, that's the chain of addiction that is gone. Many people tell you, uh, why are you an alcoholic? I'm an alcoholic because my dad was an alcoholic uh, and my grandfather was an alcoholic uh, and it goes on and on. Uh, why are you addicted to drugs? Uh, because when my mom Mom was pregnant with me. She did drugs. I, I was born addicted to drugs. All of that is reality, folks. Uh, all of that is facts. Uh, all but all facts change uh, when the truth walks in the room. Uh, and he didn't triumph over that. Uh, he triumphed inside. Uh, so what God did uh, in, uh, for my life and change could not be done to me. Uh, it had to be done in me. Uh, what God has done in your life uh, was not done to you. It's been done in you. He sanctifies from the inside out. And so that banner is not a banner of one that he's triumphed over, but one he's triumphed in. Uh, and knowing this and who he always uh, calls to triumph with him, uh, in him. Uh, if any man be in Christ, uh, he's a new creation. Uh, he has triumphed in me, uh, and now uh, in him do I live uh, and breathe uh, and have my being. It's no longer I, uh, but it's he. Uh, it's no longer me, but it's we. Uh, me and Jesus, uh, we are the majority. Uh, he marches and ushers us in. Uh, see, God brought us into the banqueting house. Every one of us this morning, uh, God brought us into his house, uh, saying, this is my child. This is my beloved. This is one that I have triumphed in. And we have been there by his authority. In him, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 2, 14, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place in every place when you're walking in the will of God you're going to triumph in every place we're going to triumph when we let his love and his spirit and his word guide our footsteps we're going to be triumph we're going to overcome every obstacle that is put in his place the banner of triumph is this it's the gospel the gospel. And what does that gospel declare? His love for us. 
Isaiah 11 and 12 says, And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed from Judah from the four corners of the earth. We understand this morning that Christ is the captain of our salvation. He enlists all of us of his soldiers under the banner of love. When you begin to see that and begin to realize, we, when we realize that and we understand that, see, people, people are easy to accept the fact that when you go into the military, the way it used to be, is you're going to get your head shaved. You're going to dress like everybody else dresses. You're going to look like everybody else looks. It's going to be, uh, you're going to march in cadence, and you don't make a move until you're told to. Why? Because they, it's not just them being mean. It's not them just being rough and rash. Uh, it's them preparing you. Uh, Brother Clinton and said this. He said, I did not understand uh, why that drill sergeant was so hard on me uh, until I started listening to him. Uh, and it did not matter why, uh, because the reality was when I got on that battlefield, uh, that's the only voice I needed to listen to. Uh, when he said, hit the deck, uh, all the ones that said, why I died. But when he says, hit the deck, you hit the deck. When he says move, uh, you say move. See, we many have not, for many years, didn't have a problem with that in the military. Now it's different. Things are different. But we come from that time that, that we realize that if you work at certain places, there's certain things and certain rules and certain regulations that they go by. When we begin to get into this household of faith, we begin to think that I have say in what I do. I have say in what. No, I've been enlisted under the banner of love. And I must continue to have a desire and a passion to declare his triumph over sin that we could be brought into a deeper relationship with God. And we say, I don't want to walk under that banner. You're not going to have a relationship with the captain. We're not going to have that declares. We, we Too many times we don't. We would never admit that we do this, but we're trying to swipe that banner. I, I want to fold that banner up, put it, put it in my pocket. I want it for later, but I, I want to go somewhere. I, I don't want people to know I'm walking under that banner. No, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I, I, if, if they, if they know, if they know I, I'm a Christian, I don't know. You know that that, that could cause me trouble. Could cause me problems. So, could you take the banner down? The banner never comes down. The banner never comes down because I don't have to worry about any enemy. I don't have to worry about any opposition that comes from this banner. Oh, if we could see in the spiritual realm this morning, we would see a banner over all of our heads. I almost went to Walmart and bought me a championship belt this morning just to hold up to know that we have that we are champions. Amen. I'm a champion not because of anything that I've done, not because of anything that I possess, but because he declared that in us. And to know that that desire and that passion to triumph over us, to bring us into a deeper relationship, the love of Christ must constrain us. The love of Christ, that banner, when we see he's brought me into his banqueting house, I don't know about you, but why would God want to? Escort me in and tell everybody he's with me. I think I would be a, be a scar and an embarrassment on, on that. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. No, he is mine. He is mine because the very thing that holds us back, he's forgotten about. It's been washed in his blood. But we're saying, Lord, I'm not worthy to come into your banqueting house because I did this, this, and this. And he said, you did what? I don't remember that because when I forgive... I forget. When we forgive, we don't forget. And when we're forgiven, we still don't forget. But he has forgotten all of that, and he's saying, this is mine. I've triumphed over them. The greatest example of that is Paul. He had to start going by his Roman name, Paul, because he knew that name Saul wasn't very popular. So he, he tried to go uh, to change his name, different name. That didn't work. Uh, they're still looking, uh, and they're still doing. Uh, and he had to, uh, no matter how much that he wrote, no matter how much that he shared, uh, people begin to look at that. Uh, but to understand something, there's a passion. Uh, he's triumphed over sin that we can be brought in that deeper relationship. The love of Christ must constrain us, church, to fight the good fight of faith. 
Throughout history, when a city was taken, the conqueror set up his standard in that city. They'd set that flag. Kings, when you, when you read about kings and they come in in that long robe, that robe was made up of every land that they had conquered. They'd sew it and add it to it. And they would come in, and when that train is there, that's why in Isaiah when he says train filled the temple, you know why that train of the king of kings filled the temple? Because he's conquered it all. He's conquered it all. He's conquered every nation of this world. He's conquered every enemy. Uh, and thank God he's conquered and triumphed in me. Uh, and he's conquered and triumphed in you. Uh, he has conquered me with his love. Uh, he has overcome me with his kindness. Uh, and he has set his banner over me. 1 Corinthians 13, 3 through 8. First part of verse 8 says, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity. Anybody know what that word charity means? Love. So everywhere you see charity, you hear charity here, you can put love. It profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil, Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Love never fails. Paul is saying much more here than we just need to love. This is called the love chapter, right? Everybody that loves, people will tell you, Everybody that loves, this, this, this is the characteristic that's going to come from love. Human love is flawed. I said that you can replace that word charity with love, but hold on a minute. Paul is saying much more here than just we need to love, and he's, he's not writing the earlier rendition of Huey Lewis in the News as Power of Love either. He is reminding us God never fails. He's reminding us, as John, 1 John 4 and 8 tells us in the latter part of the verse, God is love. So can you indulge me for a moment? I said you could put love in those places, but God is love, so, so let's, let's look at it. And though I bestow all the goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not God, it profits me nothing. God suffereth long and is kind. God envieth nothing. God vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemingly. Seeketh not her own. Uh, is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things. Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Uh, charity never faileth. Love never faileth. God never fails. God is love we're not talking romantic love we're not talking philadelphia love phil love we're philadelphia the city of brotherly love we're not talking brotherly love we're talking agape that word when you begin to translate in all of these places you're going to get that word agape and what does that word agape mean unconditional his banner over me is love and that banner that waves over me is unconditional. Paul writes in Romans chapter 8 a lengthy description of all the things that tries to tear that banner down. It tries to remove that banner. But our text said, he brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. Oh, can you see it? Through his kindness, through his mercy, through his grace. So I, I look across this sanctuary, and if I begin to look and, and say, Lord, let me see in the Spirit, I'd see over you a banner that just simply says, love, or loved, be loved, to know that his banner over each one of us, meaning that he has triumphed in us. In closing this morning, if grace you come and help me. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. 
He has brought us into the household of faith. He has placed a banner over us, and that banner declares his love for us. You know what else that banner declares? It declares us holy. It declares us righteous. Oh, my favorite, it declares me redeemed. Redeemed. To know that great is his faithfulness. That he's brought me in. I'm thankful that he brought me out. But oh, I'm glad that he brought me in. So as you stand with me today, will you join me in saying, I will lift my banner high. I will lift my banner high. So everyone will know I belong to him. I stand here victorious today because he brought me in and placed himself as a banner over me. He's got me covered. And he'll do the same for you. The Horn family sings this song. And in that song, part of that song is the thief on the cross. He's standing in heaven, and people in heaven is like, what's he doing here? What is he doing here? He said, he brought me. He brought me. You may get to heaven and be surprised that some folks aren't there. You might be, get to heaven and be surprised that some folks are there. Why are you here? He brought me. He brought me. Why are you a pastor? You stink at preaching. He brought me. Why, why do you do what you do? Because he brought me. He brought me. He placed the banner over me. I told him I couldn't do it, but he said, I got you covered. Don't worry about it. See, my big brother told me one time to tell the bully to meet me in the park after school. He said, I'll take care of those bullies once for all. You tell him, meet you across the street, that park, after school, and I'll be there, and I'll take care of him. I didn't have enough confidence to do that because I knew that my brother was easily distracted. I knew that there could have been some. He could have forgot what time school got out because he didn't go to school. See, he he dropped out of school, like elementary school, I think. I don't know. But he didn't go to school. He worked. I'm like, well, what if they called him into work? What if he forgets what time it is? What if he sleeps in? I'm calling the bully out to meet me in the park. And I'm going to get beat up this time because I called the bully out. No, I'm good. I'm good, because I wasn't sure if he was going to show up. But when God tells me to step into something, I don't even hesitate, because I know he's not going to oversleep. I know he's not going to forget, and I know that he's not slack concerning his promises. Uh, So when the enemy comes in like a flood, I know that my God raises up a standard uh, against him. I I wonder if that's the same standard, the same banner that he's got above us, knowing uh, this is mine. Uh, I have triumphed in him. I have triumphed uh, over you in their behalf. He's talking there about Romans chapter 8. Listen to what he said in verse 37. Talked about all the things Try to tear that banner down. Remove that love of God in your life. He said, no, nay. And all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That's about the time that I was going to throw my belt up. My championship. I stand victorious. Not because I'm the greatest fighter. Not because I've got it figured all out. Not because I know the Word any better than anybody else knows the Word. But there was a passion that was instilled within me uh, for the house of God, uh, for the altar, uh, for prayer, uh, for the Word. uh, And understand that we have access by one Spirit uh, into the Holy of Holies. Uh, But let me tell you something this morning, friend. Uh, There's nothing special uh, about me. Uh, You can have that same passion, uh, that same desire... uh, to say, I want to be in the house of God. Not that I've got to go to church. I want to go to church. Not that I've got to preach or I've got to do ministry. I want to do it. There's every opportunity. Wherever he opens up the door is where I want to be. 
I love what the person, I don't know who wrote this, it says, until God opens the door, I'll praise him in the hallway. Amen? Because his banner over me is love. You know, we say when you see everything going on in this world, look up, your redemption draweth nigh. Could you just look up this morning, born again, believer, and I believe you'll see a banner. You'll see a banner. And if you say, Lord, what does that banner say? It just says love. Lord, what does that mean? It means I've loved you with an everlasting love. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always. There's no temptation taking you such as common to man. Lord, what if I falter? That banner stays. I think of Pilate. They tell Pilate, take that down. He said, nope. What's written is written. It's there. Lord, I don't deserve that banner. Take that banner down. I, I don't deserve it. Too many people are that way, Lord. I've messed up. Take that title off me. You know how many times that I've fallen on my face in a prayer closet, Paul, and said, Lord, I don't deserve to be called pastor or bishop. I don't even deserve to, to have your mercy and your love, the things that I've done. Can you just take that title? Just, just, just remove me from that position because I'm so... He said, I didn't do it because you deserve it. My grace is sufficient. If you confess your sins, I'm faithful and just. I think of Peter. What do I do now? He said, feed my sheep. Repent, get up, and move on because the banner is still there. Because he uh, not only triumphed in us, uh, he triumphs in us. As long as you live in this world, you're going to face tribulations. I'm sorry to tell you, sometimes you're going to fall flat on your face. Sometimes you're going to feel unworthy. I remember a testimony. I got you standing. I'm playing Sister Baltman on you. I got you standing. I remember a testimony of my Aunt Sandy, Jeremy's mom. I believe it was her that said this. She said, there's times I get up in the morning, I don't feel saved. So I wash my face, try to get some alertness to me. So I, I don't even feel because that's when we're vulnerable. The flesh wants to take that moment to say, man, I don't even feel saved. But aren't you glad that we don't go by feelings? I walk by faith and not by sight. Sometimes I look in that mirror and I say, man, that's a failure. I, I can't believe that you've done I can't believe. Uh, and not just things, maybe not even things that we've done now, uh, but we'll look at ourselves and say, you did that? And you think that you deserve it? No, I don't deserve any of this, but he brought me in. He brought me in. I'm a new creation. I'm not who I was, but I have not yet made it to where I'm going. So I'm going to let this renewed uh, vision uh, and life uh, inside of me uh, cause me uh, to have a power uh, and let it constrain me uh, to walk uh, in the newness of life. Uh, I'm no longer who I was. Uh, I'm walking in a new direction. Uh, I've got a new uh, vision. Uh, I've got a new passion. Why? Uh, because he brought me into his banqueting house uh, and his banner over me was love. Father, I thank you. I'm thankful that you loved me enough that you gave your son to die in my stead. That you came in flesh and you conquered flesh so that the sin in my life could be conquered. And you brought us out from the shadow of your protection and said, come on. You ushered me in to the banqueting house to let everyone see the triumph and the victory that has been wrought in my life. To know that if we used to be a murderer, nobody has to fear us any longer because you delivered us from that. If we used to be a drunkard, nobody has to fear our drunken rage anymore because you have changed that. No matter what we used to be, you bring us in and say, you don't have to worry about any of that. I have triumphed in her. I have triumphed in him. They are 
mine, and I am theirs. My banner is set up over them. It's love. And my loving kindness is better than life. So we declare, Lord, with my lips, I will praise thee. Thus will I bless thee, because your banner over me is love. If you don't feel like that banner's been displayed over your life and you've not been born again, this is your opportunity to come to this altar and say, Lord, triumph in me. Triumph in me. Overcome all the sin that's been holding me back. Overcome the veil of the flesh that's been holding me back, that I may be born again and be brought in the newness of life today. And if you have been born again, know that you've been brought in because his banner declares that he has triumphed in you. Can you just come to these altars and say, Lord, continue to triumph in me, that I may be an overcomer. We ask it all right now in Jesus' name. Amen.